Many of you will have heard the term auditing, which is a type of vlogging in public or public photography, typically going around police stations, public buildings, or just generally out in public, mostly to test whether people respond, usually negatively, to catch these interactions on camera, and then obviously attract a lot of YouTube views. The reason people respond to these auditors or vloggers is typically because they don't like being filmed and if they're in any kind of authority, be that a security officer at a building, at a building site, or worse still, usually at police stations, courts, and other places like that, the vloggers tend to get reactions out of those personnel because they typically think that it is illegal to be photographed or filmed without permission. And that's what I'm talking about today. But if you're new to me, I'm a barrister who helps you understand law. So make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell icon and turn on the notifications so you don't miss anything. And if you want to leave me questions, you can find me on Instagram or I will answer some of your questions over on my sister channel at Black Belt Secrets, linked below. So I thought I'd approach this topic as a sort of question as to whether or not auditing is a legal activity. Auditing being what I've just described, vloggers going out in public, recording various buildings, and then testing what kind of reaction they get from the personnel. Auditing has been quite a widespread activity in the United States, but it is quickly becoming popular here in the United Kingdom. In fact, it's growing so quickly and becoming so popular that the National Police Chiefs Council has put out specific guidance to be adopted in various forces around the country, specifically dealing with auditors or social media vloggers. So I'm going to talk about this document a little bit today because it was obtained under a Freedom of Information request on the website, What Do They Know? And just in case the document is out of date, I don't think it is, but it's the only one I could find. It says it's version 1.4 and its review date is December 2021. So that suggests this is a current document to be adopted or guidelines to be adopted throughout the country. So as usual, starting with a very broad outline of the law, it is generally not illegal to film or take photographs whilst out in public. You do not generally need the consent of anyone else and no one has the right to stop you, confiscate the equipment, view the photographs or videos, ask you to delete them, ask for a copy of them or any of those kind of things. Although the Court of Appeal has made it very clear that it does depend on the circumstances as to whether or not there is a reasonable expectation of privacy within that public setting, even though it's out in public. Because if you use common sense and there are certain scenarios that may well give rise to a reasonable expectation of privacy. So whilst that is the general position, I do raise that flag of caution because as usual in law, almost nothing is absolutely clear cut with no avenue for argument whatsoever. There are certainly going to be times where there is an argument for the infringement of the right to privacy and you might find yourself in trouble in those scenarios. So how does this apply to auditing? Remember, auditing is not just vlogging. It is generally testing the responses, typically of security personnel or any other personnel within a building, as to how they respond to the fact that they are being filmed or the building is being filmed in order to capture this on camera for publication on YouTube. Well, again, it's not necessarily a clear cut answer, but the general position is the same. It is generally not illegal, but there are some scenarios that it's going to give rise to concerns which I'm going to highlight throughout this video. But the general position is it is not illegal. So going back to the NPCC guidance, it is titled Auditors, Social Media Bloggers, Initial Guidance. Now for my reading, the fact that it says initial guidance suggests that they had to get something out relatively quickly so that each force is acting in a consistent manner when responding to auditors or social media vloggers. Right out of the gate at point one of the document, the NPCC shows that it understands what the current issue is, and it reads as follows. There is an increasing number of reported incidents within the United Kingdom regarding auditors and social media bloggers. The auditors, bloggers, are members of the public who attend police stations and other public service buildings, including the Ministry of Defense sites, or incidents with the purpose of capturing staff on camera and live streaming to social media platforms or uploading it with edited content. The auditors use security concerns surrounding the filming of staff and premises alongside limited powers to prevent it. They appear to provoke staff and site security into potentially embarrassing reactions, often asserting that staff are overstepping legal boundaries. They are also well versed in their own rights and often cite legislation in their interactions with staff. 
Any perception they are under police surveillance is likely to be challenged robustly and potentially publicly. I would say this is a fairly good explanation as to what auditing is, which suggests that the various forces should be able to adopt a consistent approach in response to it throughout the country. Paragraph 1.4 of this guidance, remember it is guidance issued to various police services as to how they should respond, highlights the difference between auditors and what should be of much more concern when someone is filming these buildings. So auditors should be seen and responded to as just some other form of social media, entertainment, content creator. Whereas the comparison is actually somewhat stark, and that is my sort of warning, which I'm going to come to in this video, when talking about whether or not auditing is a legal activity. So paragraph 1.4 reads as follows. Auditors or bloggers should not be confused with hostile reconnaissance, which by its nature is covert. Hostile reconnaissance will cover and test security vulnerabilities, patrol routes, shift patterns, layout of a venue, and security practices. And then the guidance goes on to say, if you have a reasonable suspicion that it is hostile reconnaissance, please report it to your regional counterterrorism unit. So what this is ultimately saying is if that there is a real terror threat of reconnaissance for a particular building, which is testing the security concerns, such as how often those shift patterns are rotating, what the entry exit points are for the building, whether there are any potential weaknesses for entry exit points on that building, also any layout of the venue, which potentially includes areas around the back or yards or underground entry points, which is something that I'm going to come back to. And security practices typically might include how such a service building personnel may react to any particular terror threat or attack. Because obviously if all of these are under covert reconnaissance and surveillance and monitoring and real terror groups are collating this information, then it is going to be a genuine and very real security risk for the building. Whatever kind of building it is, but particularly if it is a Ministry of Justice building, it's a police building, or any other kind of government building, which obviously has a very important role in maintaining the security of the nation. Now, whilst I think it's very unlikely that any typical YouTube auditor creator is going to pose any such real security concerns, one concern that I have is that these activities may very well mask what might be a genuine hostile reconnaissance which some people may refer to as hiding in plain sight. How would one of these officers know if it was a genuine auditor uploading content to YouTube, which is potentially no harm at all, as against a real hostile reconnaissance, which may very well pose real security concerns. However, in section two of this guidance document, it acknowledges the following. There are no powers prohibiting the taking of photographs, film or digital images in a public place. Therefore, members of the public and press should not be prevented from doing so. We need cooperation with the media and amateur photographers. They play a vital role with their images to help us identify criminals. And this standpoint is obviously correct because there are no laws that broadly restrict or prohibit public photography or filming in public. Save, of course, for the warning that I've given you where the Court of Appeal has made it clear that it will depend on the particular circumstances with the right to privacy. Now, whilst the guidance makes it clear that a search under Section 43 of the Terrorism Act 2000 is a last resort, it is a possibility because if someone is filming these buildings and they are coming very close to the fringe of what might be a suspicious activity, such as what I've mentioned, filming and testing the security vulnerabilities of particular buildings, there is a possibility of being searched under the Terrorism Act. And remember, if you are detained under the Terrorism Act for a genuine suspicion of terror activity, you can be held for up to 14 days without charge. So from my point of view, that makes this a very dangerous and risky activity. At the very least, there are going to be questions as to what the auditor is doing and why they are filming. Now, at the outset, there is no obligation upon any person to answer these questions unless they are being detained and arrested for the purposes of those questions. Obviously, one of the first things that happens is that the person being filmed typically asks the vlogger why they are filming. Now, I've seen very different reactions to these questions in various videos. Some I would agree with, some I might not necessarily agree with, but none of which are necessarily wrong because no one is under any obligation to answer those questions, but it might give rise to additional suspicions if the response to the person asking the question is particularly hostile. 
especially if you are near a particularly sensitive or vulnerable public building or security building, and the person asking you the question is a designated security officer to maintain the security of that building. In such scenarios, a search under section 43 can only be undertaken if there is a reasonable suspicion that the vlogger is a terrorist. And the purpose of that search, of course, would be to determine whether or not that person has in their possession anything that might constitute evidence that they are a terrorist or any link to terrorism. And as I said earlier, it is very unlikely to be the case if it is obvious that the vlogger is simply a YouTuber with a YouTube account auditing these buildings, uploading for public consumption as entertainment. However, there will come a point where there are so many of these that it becomes almost impossible for the security services to determine whether or not it is a genuine vlogger, auditor, or whether, as I said, it is someone hiding in plain sight and is genuinely hostile reconnaissance. So I do suspect that this landscape is going to change and shift in the coming months if there is an increase in the number of auditors out in the field. One of the examples that springs to mind in response to such questions as to why are you filming is Charlie Veach. Not only do most of the security personnel know who Charlie Veach is by now, but whenever Charlie is asked why he is filming, he quite openly states immediately without any kind of argument he's filming for YouTube or just creating content for YouTube and very often invites people to subscribe to his channel. This, in my view, is an open interaction. So whilst Charlie is out in public filming whatever he pleases, in any videos that I've watched, Charlie has been open about the fact that he has a YouTube channel and this is the purpose for recording the video. In the most recent video I found, Charlie repeatedly said he did not want any conflict. He repeated his name. He said it was for YouTube. He agreed to blur out the faces of anybody that didn't want to appear on the video. And so in my view, this is a perfectly polite interaction between Charlie and the two security officers. Although the security officers did try to assert a number of times that Charlie was not allowed to film out in public, which is obviously not the case. And polite interactions like this are much less likely to attract serious suspicion around Charlie than say someone who is being very aggressive with the security officers not telling them why they are there even though there's no obligation upon them to do so but as I said they will become a very fine line and I think this line is going to come even closer the more auditors that are out there and the more chance that real hostile reconnaissance can hide in plain sight giving more serious concern and suspicion as to why people are filming certain buildings. So by way of summary, auditing in and of itself is generally a perfectly legal activity. Although, as I said, there are some caveats because if there are some obviously very private situations that an auditor is filming, the courts may take a dim view of that. Or if there are some real security concerns, such as very aggressive behavior by the auditor, or particular concerns about a specific building, or what's happening at that building on that particular day, it's never going to be absolutely clear cut as to whether or not there's going to be further action taken against the auditor, such as searches under the Terrorism Act and potentially more. So I hope this video serves as a broad explanation with a few warnings along the way. Please give it a thumbs up if you like this content and remember, stay humble and subscribe.